Hey guys, Miss Jamie here. Um, I hope that you're doing well this week. Last week, Millie Weaver and I looked at a passage of scripture and answered three questions. The questions were, who is God? Who is man? And what in the passage do we need to obey? This week, I wanna share a method of study with you that uses the here method. H for highlight, E for explain, A for apply, and R for respond. I've asked Hattie Burcham and Emma Pirtle to join me so that you can see just how easy it is for the three of us to open up God's Word and to answer a few questions. I'm really excited uh, that because we've ordered in several of these books, the foundation books, and hopefully you've seen them on social media, uh, but if not, they're here at the church and we're giving these to families, uh, one per family, and you guys can use these to help your children uh, go through the New Testament over the next year. So join me today as I welcome Miss Hattie and Miss Emma. Well, hi, ladies. Hi. How are y'all? Good. Good. Yes. Um, today I have Miss Hattie Burcham and Miss Emma Pirtle uh, with me today, and I'm really excited to see you girls because I haven't seen any kids except my own in the last week. And so, you guys been at home? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. What have you been doing? Homework. Homework. Online. Online school and homework. Yes. How's that going? Boring. It's boring? <laughs> yeah. It's hard to fill a day at home like we fill a day at school, isn't it? Yes. yes. Yeah. And how about you? How's it going at home? Um, homework, playing outside when it's nice, just doing random stuff. Yeah. That's good. Well, today is incredible. I went home for lunch and I sat outside for a few minutes because it was just so beautiful. Um, well, we are in the edge again. Last week, uh, we hosted with Millie Weaver. She came, and we were in the edge, and um, I just love this spot. So I wanted to bring you girls here, and um, I wanted to talk about uh, another method of Bible study. Um, one of the things um, that I find so interesting is that even though our world is ever-changing, right? The world changes from day to day. There's one thing that does not change, and you know what that is? God's Word. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not a trick question. So God's Word doesn't change. And so um, helping you parents and helping uh, students understand how important it is to get into God's Word, um, it's imperative that we learn. And so parents, uh, today I wanted to show you another method of study. We're going to be using the HERE method, which is highlight, explain, apply, and respond. And Hattie is in sixth grade and Emma is in fifth grade. And I've asked them to come because uh, as your kids get older and as um, they become stronger readers um, and as they start asking deeper questions, uh, Bible study method needs to um, get deeper as well. And so we gave away this book, uh, Foundations for Kids. Uh, I still have some of these available, but many families picked this up um, several weeks ago, just right after Easter. Um, and it's a wonderful book. It does apply the HERE method, and the kids are able to do this on their own uh, if they are readers. And then, of course, if not, parents, you can work through this book with them. Uh, but this book is actually 260 days worth of Bible study uh, going through the New Testament. And so we have five days on. Some people like to say Monday through Friday. And then we have Saturday and Sunday to catch up on anything that we might have missed that week. Um, that book specifically has age-appropriate activities, and it makes it very fun for the student to do this on their own and to have um, a time where they can establish that quiet time on their own. Um, so with that, um, I'm also going through this same Bible study, and I'm actually using the adult version, which looks like this. I found both of these resources at lifeway.com, uh, but the adult version has no activities, and it's all study. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through um, together a passage of Scripture, and we're going to basically blend the two of these um, so that you, the parent, can see how easy it is to do this with your child, um, but then also as a family or for yourself. All right, so are you girls ready? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the most important thing to do whenever we open up God's Word is to do what to start off with? Pray. To pray, yeah. So we're going to study God's Word. Who do we need to help us understand it? God. God, that's right. 
So last week I shared a um, scripture in Luke that showed where Jesus helped his disciples understand the word. Today I'm going to show you a scripture in Psalms. And Psalm is a book written by David. David was a shepherd, but then he became a king. And it says that he was a man after God's own heart. And when I read the book of Psalm, there are so many things in this book that I feel like that's me. That makes total sense. I've felt that way, or I've been excited like that, or I've been sad like that. And all through this book, uh, in Psalm 119, verse 18, it says, Open my eyes that I may see wonderful things in your law. And when I read that, um, I just really um, love to read the scriptures as an adult, but as a child, I really struggled with it. Um, I had a King James Version Bible as a child, and um, until I got a different Bible and NIV, it was really hard. So sometimes it's difficult to sit and read scripture. Um, and so that's why um, having a, a method to study God's scripture is important. Um, but also we start with prayer. So let's open up with prayer and let's ask God to teach us, okay? Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this time. God, I thank you for Hattie and for Emma and that they love to read the scriptures. I pray, God, that you would just open our eyes to the wondrous things in your scripture. God, I just pray that you would speak to each one of us individually. And God, I just pray that you would show us the areas of our life that we need to align with your truth. In your name I pray, amen. 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 Okay, so we're going to look in Luke chapter 6 as our passage today. Let me turn over here. Luke chapter 6, and we're going to read 46 through 49. And uh, just so that everybody knows, have we read this scripture together? Have we? This is the wise and foolish builders is what it's called. Have we read this together? No. No, we haven't. Okay. <laughs> just double check. Um, and I read this actually two weeks ago, so I'm going to do this again with you girls, and um, we'll see what the Lord pulls out for us, okay? Okay, Hattie, you want to start us off? 46 through 49, so just three, those three verses. Why did you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? As for everyone who comes to me and hears my words and puts them into practice, I will show you what they are like. They are like a man building a house who dug down deep and laid the foundation on a rock. When a flood came in, when the flood came, the Trojan struck torrent. Torrent struck the house, but could not shake it because it was well built. But the one who hears my words and does not put them into practice is like a man who built a house on the ground without a foundation. The moment of the torrent struck the house, it collapsed, and its destruction was complete. Mm. Okay. So in the here method, we're going to highlight, uh, it's going to be the first thing. And so we said it's in Luke chapter 6, and this is verses 46 through 49, right? Um, and just tell me, like one thing off the top of your head that stuck out to you in this in this passage. Building on a solid foundation. Very good. Yeah. You probably could actually just sum up that whole passage mm -hmm. with that, right? Yeah. So if you were journaling, you would write that down. You would write down H, highlight, um, and then building a house on a firm foundation. That's good. That's good. Um, who um, Who do you think he's talking to here? His disciples. Yep, he's talking to his disciples. Very good. Do you think that, gosh, 2,000 years later, this applies to you and me? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, isn't it cool that we have the scriptures 2,000 years later? The yeah, disciples yeah. did. They did what um, Jesus told them to do. And so we have, we have a complete um, Bible, scripture, God's word, because of that, which is awesome. 
So that's good. Um, that's good. You know, when I read this passage, I think it is so important to have a firm foundation. Um, about 15 years ago, we built our house. And I'd never built a house before. I didn't even know what it took to build a house. Uh, but when we got started, we, we dug down into um, the ground and we had to hit rock. And when we hit rock, we knew that we could set up a foundation. Um, now here in Farmington, it's different than even in Fayetteville because there's a lot of mountains or you know hillsides in Fayetteville that, that we may not have here. But we had to pour a foundation. And before we poured the foundation, we had to pour footings. And so um, I asked Mr. Chris this morning, I said, okay, now remind me exactly where did the footings go? And he said, it's a concrete slab that they pour and it goes around the perimeter of where your house. So the outside walls of your house sit on this footings, right? And I said, well, that's neat. Well, what goes into a footing? Is it just concrete? And he said, no, there's rebar. There's still rebar that runs through it, and it makes it really strong. And then he told me um, that since we have um, a basement, that we have steel beams. There's three major steel beams that run through the middle of the house and that run across so that it's a firm foundation for the rest of the house um, once you get above the basement. And I thought that was so cool because I thought, well, that's really good because what if, what if an earthquake happened here, you know, like, and it shook my house, How, what would happen, right? <laughs> what if it wasn't on a firm foundation? Or this right here says a torrent. What would happen to a house if a tornado came and it wasn't on a firm foundation? It would get destroyed. Yeah, it'd probably get destroyed. Um, I always heard, I would see things where people would build a house on a beach where there's sand, and if you see the waves come in, the tide comes in, what would happen when the tides went out? It would flood the house. Yeah, it would take the house with it, too, <laughs> wouldn't it? Have you ever built a sand castle on the beach, you know, yes. and then the floods come in, and, the, and then it, and it wipes it away? Yeah, that's kind of, that's the picture in my mind. Um, but it's also good to build our lives on a firm foundation. So let me ask you. What do you think the firm foundation is for our lives? His word. Mm -hmm. His word and? Him. Him. Very good. Y'all are smart. Good. Yeah, Jesus. And Jesus is the word, right? Okay, so after we highlight, then we're going to explain. Okay, so I'm going to ask you ladies a few questions, and you guys just answer as things kind of pop out at you, okay? Okay, so let's explain here. Um... Why do you think, why do you think the Holy Spirit, or why do you think God found it important to add this passage into the Bible? Why do you think that's important? So that um, whenever we forget or we just don't read the Bible anymore, it may tear us down and we may feel like sad, but when we read it, it builds us up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Why do you think, Emma, why do you think he included that passage? Um, I think um, if we, like Hattie said, if we stop, it's just going, we're not really building ourselves up to know him better, and I think when we continue to read his word, that it's building up closer to him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Um, do you, you think a firm foundation would be important as you grow up and become an adult? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, can you think of something like, like an example of a reason why you would want a firm foundation? Just kind of like now, when you go back to school in the fall, why wouldn't you want a firm foundation on Jesus and his word? So if, like, anyone's being mean to you or something, mm -hmm. you would have something to build you back up after they tear you down. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think there's anybody in the world that is going to try to mislead you? Yes. yes. Yeah. Do you ever watch anything, maybe on TV, that you're like, oh, wait a minute, that doesn't sound right? Yes. Yes. Or maybe your parents say you can't watch that on TV because... 
that's not something that's true and you don't need to see. Yes. Yeah. Doesn't benefit you, right? <laughs> like pop-up ads on YouTube videos, right? <laughs> Those aren't beneficial at all. Um, and so it is important. And let me ask you this. So if you're a follower of Jesus, right? And have you made that decision to follow Jesus, to yes. give your life to Jesus? Yeah, me too. Um, and so we're supposed to, yeah, follow Jesus, right? We want to become like Jesus. And when we do that, it's what it says, is that we have laid our lives on the firm foundation, okay? And I can tell you lots of things will come throughout your life, right? Like COVID-19, right? Who knew? <laughs> that's, that's one of those things. Okay, so we've kind of explained the passage. Now let's apply it. Let's ask some questions on how we can apply this passage um, to our lives, okay? Okay, what do you think that this text is teaching you about God? What would you see in there that says, okay, this teaches me about God? I will show you what is like, what it's like, when someone comes to me, listens to my teaching, and when and, and then it and then follows it. Mm -hmm. Yep. And Hattie, what do you think? What do you see there? Where do you see God? That the one who hears my words and does not put them into practice is like a foundation. The, is like a foundation. The moment that destroys strikes a house. Mm -hmm. So the one that hears my words, who is my? Whose words are these? His. His. They're Jesus' God's. words, yeah. So we see God right there, don't we? They're his words. Um, it says, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? So right there we see that he's Lord. What does Lord mean? What does Lord mean to you? What is that? Jesus. God yeah. and Jesus. Mm -hmm. But what is a Lord? Have you ever heard the word Lord? Um. I've heard it in some like fairy tale movies. Yeah, and mm -hmm. books. yeah, like Lord of the Manor. So, what does that usually mean? Like the king. The king. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So Jesus is the king, right? Uh -huh. And he's the greatest king, the king of kings, all kings. Um, and it's his words. And it says, for everyone who comes to me and puts my words into practice, they're like a man who dug down deep and laid a foundation on the rock. So we see God right there. That it's God's words. He is our Lord, and it's those things we need to put into practice, right? Okay, so um, where do you see, where would you see, like, where do you see people in this passage? Where do you, are people, are people generally good? Are people generally not good? What are we called disobedience? Sin. Sin, yeah. So people generally... They're sinful. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. So where do you see sin in this passage? Um, but anyone who hears and doesn't obey is like a person who builds a house without a foundation. Very good. That's right. Yeah, the one that obeys is the one that is following God, mm -hmm. and the one that doesn't, doesn't is following sin, right? Mm -hmm. So which one are we like? Which which one? The one, with the one who listens. Mm -hmm. We want to be, mm -hmm. right? Every day I want to be the one that listens. That's why we read God's word. Do you always do that? Do you always listen? No. 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 I do. I don't either. I don't always listen. Yep. Over my span of life, I don't always listen. <laughs> okay. What do you think that God is trying to say to you personally? When you read this, what kind of pops out is like, hmm. I didn't know that exactly. I think God wants me to maybe look into that further. What do you what do you I see there? Like the foundation, how we should stay still mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. read his Bible instead of go watch something instead of reading it. Mm hmm Yep. Is it always fun to do? No, no. not all the time. 
No, it's not. If we were honest, we would be truthful in saying that it's not always fun to stop and read scripture, is it? <laughs> That's okay. I don't find it fun either, especially when God points out something I need to change, right? That's not fun. Um, but do we, do we read God's word because it's fun? No, we no. read it because it has information that we need. Yeah, and it puts us on a what? What kind of foundation? A good foundation. A, good foundation. a firm foundation, a solid foundation. That's right. Very good. Okay, so was there anything, Emma, that kind of popped out to you that you feel like, hmm, that's for me. I need to. Um, I think that, like, if you listen to him, you're on a firm foundation. So, like, when you're reading the, when you're reading the word, you are building your foundation. Mm-hmm. But as if when you don't listen, you're kind of tearing down your foundation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So the last part is respond. It's the R. It's respond. And so with what you've both just said, <clears throat> what do you think your response to God would be? Like if you were going to write a prayer in response and you were going to read this and then you were going to be like, okay, I need to change. There might be something specific that came to your mind. A lot of times the Holy Spirit will do that. They'll bring an example to your mind or a person to your mind. Is there anything that you feel like you need to change to respond to God, to be in line with his word? Probably read his scripture more. Okay. Probably to, like, focus more and not have, um, like, a bunch of background noises when you're trying to read it Mm because I get distracted really easily. Yeah, me too. (laughs) Me too. My phone distracts me a lot. What distracts you? My phone, my TV, mm-hmm. my brother. Mm-hmm. We have thin walls and he plays my music. Yeah. Yeah. Siblings are distracting. Yes. yes. Yeah. <laughs> Especially when you have two younger siblings. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Absolutely. I had two younger siblings growing up. So. I have an older one. Mm-hmm. Hey, Dad. Mm-hmm. I can drive. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's good. <clears throat> so what, what, tell me, like, what, what would a prayer be? What would, how would you talk to God and tell God, like, you know, thank you that you have brought this to my attention. Um, would you maybe apologize? Would you ask God to forgive you yeah. for not, maybe not doing this? And now to thank him that he's shown you why, mm-hmm. maybe. So what what would a prayer be like for you? To ask for his forgiveness. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And maybe for some help to remind me every day mm-hmm. to read the scripture more. Yeah, that's good. Those are great. Absolutely. Well, I'm really proud of you ladies, and I thank you for spending some time with me here today. Um, Once you kind of get into this groove and you study scripture this way, um, it actually really does come alive, and it's exciting how God connects every single passage to Jesus, and um, I just, I really loved reading scripture. And so, um, parents, it is difficult for kids sometimes to make that connection that scripture is important. And your um, help and accountability is vital for their growth and for them to also find it important. Um, And so, I thank you, ladies, for your time. And um, yeah, I look forward to more conversations about this. All right. Thank y'all.